you people need to know certain points about the semiconductor diode the semiconductor cap stick is not a straight line therefore diode is a non ohmic device it's not a ohmic device it's a non ohmic device at breakdown voltage the current is maximum and it is due to the breakdown of covalent bonds i'll repeat again at breakdown voltage the current is maximum and it is due to the breakdown of covalent bonds a large number of electron hole pairs are formed here a high reverse current may damage the junction here so the reverse bias resistance is very much greater than the forward bias resistance i'll repeat again the reverse bias resistance is very much high greater than forward bias resistance junction diode as a rectifier so from the vi characteristics of a junction diode we see that it allows the current to pass only when it is in the forward bias so if an alternating voltage is applied across the diode the current flows only in the part of the cycle when the diode is forward bias this property is used to rectify alternating voltages and the circuit used in this purpose is called as rectifier so a device which passes current only in only one forward direction and there and can therefore be used as a ac to dc converter i'll repeat again so from vi characteristics of a junction diode we see that it allows current to pass only when it is forward bias so if an alternating voltage is applied across a diode the current flows only in the part of the cycle when the diode is only forward bias this property is used to rectify alternating voltages and the circuit used for this purpose is called as a rectifier a device that passes current only in the forward direction and can therefore be used as an ac to dc converter the next topic is rectification the process of converting ac to dc is called as rectification i'll repeat again the process of converting ac to dc is called as rectification then what is a rectifier the device which converts ac to dc is called as a rectifier i'll repeat again the device which converts ac to dc is called as a rectifier then the the next topic is principle of rectification semiconductor diode conducts the current during forward bias and does not conduct the current during a reverse bias i'll repeat again semiconductor diode conducts the current during forward bias and does not conduct the current in reverse bias that is diode has unidirectional conducting property because the diode will have a unidirectional conducting property this is the principle of rectification okay so this is the principle of rectification then the next topic is half wave rectifier the rectifier which converts only half cycles of ac into dc is called as a half wave rectifier i'll repeat again the rectifier which converts only half cycles of ac into dc is called as half wave rectifier so this is how the half wave rectifier works this is the circuit of the half wave rectifier this is the transformer this is ac power source this is a diode this is load resistance rl so here in the circuit diagram as is as shown on this figure the ac 
to be converted into DC is fed to the primary of the transformer. So this is the primary and this is the secondary. The, the voltage, the AC that is to be converted into DC is fed to the primary of the transformer. That means it is given here to here. Okay, then a, di a diode D and lower resistance RL is connected to secondary of the transformer. A diode and lower resistance RL is connected to secondary of the transformer. I hope you can clearly see here. Okay, then during positive half cycle of AC, the point A is positive terminal. Po point A is positive terminal positive potential with respect to point B. So this is point A and this is point B. I will repeat again. The point A is positive potential with respect to point B. Then diode is forward bias. So the diode will be forward bias and it conducts the current. So because it, because it is a forward bias, it will conduct the current, the output is obtained across the load resistance. So, output will be obtained here, load resistance. Okay. So, during the negative half cycle of AC. So, during the negative half cycle, so the, what happens here is, uh, the point A is negative potential. Point A is negative potential with respect to B. In the first case, the point A was positive potential. Now, in the second case, the A is negative potential here. So, then the diode is reverse bias. So, if the diode is reverse bias, so it will not conduct the current here. So, it will does not conduct the current. The output is not obtained across the load resistance. So, the output will not be obtained in the load resistance. We get the output only during the one half cycle. So when it was only forward bias, at that time itself the output was obtained. So we get the output only during the only uh, half cycle. Thus it is called as half wave rectifier. So by that reason itself, this is called as a half wave rectifier. The graph of input AC and output DC is as shown in this figure. So this is a AC input voltage. So for this, during the positive half cycle, one half is obtained. In the negative half cycle, since it is reverse bias, we don't get any kind of output here. But again in the positive half cycle, we get a output. Okay, this is how half wave rectifier works. Next topic is full wave rectifier. The rectifier which converts both the half cycles of AC into DC is called as a full wave rectifier. So I'll explain the working of this full wave rectifier. This is the circuit. This is a central center tap transformer. Okay. So this is the primary of this transformer and this is the secondary of the transformer. So this is the diode D1 and D2 and this is a load resistance RL output. Okay. So the circuit diagram is as shown in this figure. The AC the, that is to be converted into DC is fed to the primary P of B transformer. Like what we did in the half wave rectifier, the same procedure is used here. So the AC which is to be converted into DC is fed to the primary of the transformer. That is to be there. Okay. Then the two diodes D1 and D2 and load resistance RL is connected to secondary of the center tapped transformer. I told you the diode D1, D2 and the load resistance RL, all these three things they are connected to the central tap transformer, the secondary of the central tap transformer. So during the positive half cycle of AC, the point A is positive with respect to B here. That is A is positive with respect to B here. 
So, what happens here when the diode D1 is forward biased and diode D2 is reverse biased? I hope you know this now. Okay. After this, the diode D1 conducts the current and the diode D2 will not conduct the current here. So, the output is obtained across the load resistance RL due to the diode D1. So, the output is obtained in the load resistance RL because of the diode D1 here. So, during the negative half cycle of AC, what will happen? The point A is negative with respect to B here, that is A is negative here. So, obviously if A becomes negative, then the B will be positive here. So, what happens here? So, the diode during the negative half cycle, the point A is negative with respect to B, then the diode T1 is reverse bias and the diode T2 is forward bias. So the D2 is reverse bias, D1 is reverse bias now and the D2 is forward bias. Now the D, D1 doesn't conduct any kind of current and the D2 will obviously conduct the current here. So the output is obtained across the load resistance RL due to the diode D2. So in the second case the diode D2 will conduct the current and the output will be obtained in the load resistance RL here. So, uh, the output that is obtained in both the half cycles of AC here. I will repeat again, the output is obtained during both the half cycles of AC here. So, this is, it, this is why it is called as a full wave rectifier. The graph of input AC and output DC is as shown here. This is the graph here. So you can clearly see that this is this is the waveform of A and this is the waveform of B and in both the cases the there will be conduction of current here. So D1 conducts the current in the first case, but there is no current in the D2 here. So at the same time the D2 will conduct the current, but the D1 will not conduct the current here. And again D1 will conduct the current, D2 will not conduct the current. So like here D2 will conduct the current and D1 will not conduct the current here. This is how the full wave rectifier works. The next topic is necessity of using filter circuits in a rectifier. Necessity of using filter circuits in rectifiers. So the rectified voltage is in the form of pulses of the shape of harmonics. Though it is unidirectional, it does not have a steady value. To get steady DC output for, from the pulsating voltage, normally a capacitor is connected across the output terminals. One, one can also use an inductor in series with load resistance RL for the same purpose. Since these addition circuits uh, appear to filter out the AC ripple and give the pure DC voltage, so they are called as filters. The next topic is ripple factor. An alternating current component superimposed on a direct current composed component resulting in the instantaneous value of the unidirectional current or voltage. I will repeat again. An alternating current component superimposed on a direct current component resulting in the instantaneous value of the unidirectional current or voltage. The term is particularly applied to the output of the rectifier. The frequency of the AC component in the ripple frees the ripple frequency. For a full wave rectifier, it is twice the frequency of the input signal. The next topic is full wave rectifier with capacitor filter. So we are using capacitor filter to the full wave rectifier. This is the circuit diagram of the full wave rectifier with the capacitor filter. We have a capacitor here and a load resistance RL. So input AC is here and the DC which we got from the circuit is here output. Okay. So the above circuit or this circuit will explain the use of capacitor in 
felt terrible. So when the voltage across the capacitor is rising, when the voltage across the capacitor is rising, okay. So here the the inlet is shown in the graph that it is rising. So at this time the capac uh, the it gets charged. So when the voltage across the capacitor is rising, it gets charged. If there is no external load, it remains charged to the peak voltage of the rectified old output. So I'll repeat again. If there is no external load, it remains charged to the peak voltage of the rectified output. When there is a load, it gets discharged through the load, and the voltage across it begins to fall. So. In the next half cycle of the rectified output, it again gets charged to the peak value. So I'll repeat again. So in the next half cycle, the rectified output it again gets charged to the peak value. The concept of charging and discharging depends on the value of RC elements, that is resistance and capacitor elements. So you should know few things in this. Capacitor filter circuits. That is the capacitor filter certified circuits. So here the capacitor blocks DC and allows AC here. So the rate of fall of the voltage across the capacitor depends upon the inverse product of the capacitor C and the effective resistance R used in the circuit, and it is called as time constant. So I'll repeat again. The rate of fall of the voltage across the capacitor. Depends upon the inverse product of capacitor C and the effective resistance R L used in the circuit, and it is called as time constant. To make the time constant large, value of C should be large. I'll repeat again. To make the time constant value very large, the value of C should also be large. So this is the graphical representation of full wave rectifier with capacitor filter. So this is the AC input. So this is the input which we get, and this is the output with capacitor input filter. So this is the output which we get here. Okay.